Welcome to the Local Man's Awful Podcast. This is episode five. Um, how y'all been? My my week was pretty good. It was chilling. It was an uh not not that very crazy of a week. It was pretty packed. I'm pretty tired. But um nonetheless it was great. Um was supposed to go to the Big Bite, Culture Abuse, Smut, and Nothing show, but Pay, our plans fell through so didn't really end up going to that uh, which sucked because no uh, Alan was expecting me but it's cool I'll probably catch him the next tour cycle um, I practiced for the aggravators for the birthday show for Frankie's birthday show happy birthday to him he turned 17 um he asked us to play, and we were kind of scared to play it because it was nine bands on the bill, and most of the bands were playing. Most of the bands that were playing, it was their first show, so it's kind of hesitant. I'm uh, hesitant for that, but it ended up being really sick, and uh, like because I hate house shows, but that one was like really fucking cool. So I had a great time. Met his family. Um. Reclaim had a good set, but I think the Aggravators had a better set. Uh, a lot of people were moshing them more than Reclaim, but that's cool. It's time for them to shine. Uh, the next day, we recorded Away, Julio and Ray's band, their new project. Julio and, Julio and Ray are from Maron. Uh, they asked me to record their demo, so I went about that and uh, tracked five songs. They're pretty good songs. Can't wait for y'all to hear them. Um, they, uh, it was just Julio and Ray, and I think they're trying to get the roughs out so they can um, send it to their singer Fern so he can write to it, but some good stuff. I can't wait for that. It's fun hanging out with those dudes because they're a little bit older than us, but it's just like, I don't know, just hearing stories and just talking to them. I gained knowledge and wisdom. Um, Monday, fucking September 24th, The Licks dropped a banger-ass EP. Uh, if you haven't heard it already, please check it out. It's really good. Uh, all the songs are really good. Uh, Birdhouse is like my least favorite, but I think it'll come around. I think it'll come around to that. Uh, Rip. Rip's the song for me. That's a good-ass song. The Harmony... And the melody line in the beginning is pretty good. Uh, Monday, I think all the songs are really good. Please check it out. Casey fucking killed it on the mix. And mastering. I don't know how to master. That shit's way too confusing for me. But yeah, no, hit him up. Hit Casey up. He'll record y'all. He'll do a good job for it too. I think I might be wrong. Please correct me. He did the Juniper Park stuff. But um, yeah, no, hit my boy up. I think his ads like KFC Atkins or whatnot. But yeah, he fucking pulled it off. He, he's a he's a genius. I talked to him about like mixing and recording and whatnot, and we kind of just bounce ideas off each other. And I'll ask him like, cause I'm not good at mastering, so I'll hit him up, be like, hey, how do you do this? And he'll tell me. And then we'll just like geek out over gear. And so that's just good. But yeah, go pick his brain. And then that same day, they had a secret show, The Licks, which did pretty well. They, uh, I don't know, they packed the room a little bit at C47. They had Fashion Jackson play, Juniper Park, and Living Room Routine. Living Room Routine is Paul, his his project, which I think was PVH and then turned into Living Room Routine. And then Juniper Park went on. They're pretty good. They're really good. I know uh, Josh is in school right now, so they had... Uh, I, c I can't remember the dude's name right now. But they had somebody fill in for him. He was really good, too. He had a big fucking, like, ride. I don't know what size it was, but it was huge. Uh, Let's see. Who was next? Fashion Jackson. Those guys are really super nice. They're super cool. I, c I wish I would have gotten the guitar player's name, but he was, like, really cool. Like, I was DJing the whole night, and I was just playing music. And um, I played a Tribe Called Quest, and he came up to me. He's like, 
oh, you know this song? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. I, like, I fuck with this shit. And he's like, this is like one of their deep cuts. And so like we just talked about like A Tribe Called Quest and just mixing and the board and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, they were, oh my, they were super cool. And like meeting all of them and they're just like really nice dudes too. And they all like, I know the bass player wore like a red, red coveralls. And they're all wearing like overalls and the drummer look, and the drummer's like a skater. You can just tell by looking at him. Super cool guy. I think his name's like Sean. But they had like this one song. I can't remember. Gossamer or some whatnot. They closed with it. It was pretty good. I don't know if they closed with it. I think it was their second to last. But I, I was like, I vibe with this shit. Uh, yeah, no. And then the licks went on and it was weird watching them play. Cause like, I remember like watching them evolve when, um, they were just raiding in July. And or, I mean, when Chad was in raiding in July and I remember when he barely knew how to play it or barely knew how to play guitar. And now he just fucking shreds, but yeah, no, it, it felt good seeing them evolve into what they are now, but credit Credit to them. They they fucking killed it. Their performance on it is really good. Um anything coming up for local man, let's see. Um I do have a plan for something coming up. I don't want to release the details for it just yet, but uh if you're in a band and would like to be featured on this, um please hit me up. I have uh, a cool little project I'm working on. It's for the winter time. Uh, please, yeah, hit me up. Uh, I'll give you all the details on it, but it's going to be pretty sick. Uh, our boys, uh, Noble Bones, Eric, Mike, David, and Wesley, they're going on tour this week. I think they're hitting, I think they're doing 10 days. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 10. They're doing a West Coast fall tour. Um, They're hitting Los Angeles, Berkeley, Portland, Seattle, Eugene, Sacramento, Fresno, uh, Bakersfield, Riverside, and then Homecoming at C47. So if you guys are in one of those areas, please check them out. They're my friends. They write good music. I recorded them. So yeah. Uh yeah, no, they're going on tour. I don't know if they ever got their their van thing situated. Cause I remember plans fell through with the van, but uh if they did it and you have a van that would like that you would like to help out and lend them to, they're good men. They won't burn you, I trust you. Or trust me. Yeah, hit them up. Help them out. They're good they're good boys. Um, and then, uh, shows coming up tomorrow. We got C47, uh, Stay Wild, Lost in Society. It's just simple on the aggravators. Uh, we got Stay Wild from Los Angeles. Good friend. Shout out to Nick Riggs and Jahia and David. Uh, Lost in Society, the New Jersey. I remember seeing them on programs, Instagram, like a long time ago. So it's cool to like, like uh, play with them. Uh, pretty solo band or solo project. It's just simple. And then the aggravators. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow, please come through, hang out. Um. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, let's see what else do I have to address. Oh yeah, I'm also writing the carb on my EP. For those of you uh, that like synth pop, check it out. It's pretty good. There's like one song up there already on Local Man. It's all right. It's pretty good. It's all. Right. It's it's whatever compared to the new stuff. It's pretty. It's pretty crap. It's pretty shitty. But uh, yeah, no. So today's episode is uh, my good friend and my longtime friend uh, Cesar Marquez. Or Cesario Angelo Marquez. He uh, wanted to do this sort of like chronological like history thing of me and him. But I wanted to do the interview style that I usually do. So we filmed two episodes actually. 
and um, the his it's kind of him talking more on the second episode, so it's kind of like more his episode, uh, him like confirming with me, but uh, yeah, I talked to him. And we just talked about how long we've been jamming together and all the good stuff and unnecessary bullshit in the scene. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, here's my episode with, uh, Cesar Marquez. of local man's awful podcast i am your host local man aka brad aka aka um bard um i'm joined by caesar marquez hello uh my name is caesar i currently you play it yourself i'm just fucking with you what? i'm just messing with you oh well i currently play bass in a band called reclaim and a band called belladonna okay i asked garrett this before but what do you consider reclaim uh, Reclaim is a hardcore punk band based out of Victorville, California. What do you consider Belladonna? Uh, Belladonna is a modern day take on 90s grunge. Okay. All straight right. out of the pipe and hot desert. So our first topic we're going to jump right into. Okay. How many projects are you in? Currently... Uh, I'd say two, two active projects. Now, non-active. Non-active? Well, like, you and I have Car Bomb. Uh, Robert and I are wanting to start some kind of punk band, I'd imagine. Uh, you and I also have another hardcore band called False Life. Mm-hmm. Um, I am thinking about getting back and doing chiptune on my own private personal solo that's the word and I, I think that's it um yeah i feel like um that was like the long running meme is that every new band that was happening was just yeah. you and me yeah, in we some were both in like i remember like for a minute there on the local man band camp it was just like oh another yeah, was, caesar yeah. and brad band yeah it was like anti-socialite and then uh and then you did drums in open house Yep. Uh, and then we did Reclaim. We did, you did Belladonna, but I eventually joined Belladonna. We did Reclaim. I think I probably already said that, but yeah, yeah, we do a lot of shit together. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What do I want to talk about? Because I don't want to talk about that one yet. Um. Queer Eye, best <laughs> boy. Um. Uh, my my favorite. Um. Uh, member. Of uh, the queer eye cult is uh, Anthony. Anthony's my favorite. Um, Have you I seen would... him shirtless? Oh fuck yeah! It's pretty good. You seen him in a crop top? Yeah, I do. Nice. I'd fucking I'd risk it all, dude. <laughs> I would. I would. I would, I would break vegan edge to like cheese off of him. <laughs> um, On some real shit. Anthony. Okay, if you had to rank him from so, least to greatest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, least well, okay. Well, I'm just gonna start by saying that I, I love all of them equally. I mean, not equally, but like <laughs> I love all of them. Okay. Um, I would say my least favorite is probably Bobby. Yeah, Bobby kind of just doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he remakes the house, but no, well, I don't know. Bobby has some great moments, but yeah, um, yeah, I would say Bobby's at the bottom of my list. Second, now, this is where it's hard. I yeah, this is like, where this is where it gets hard. Um. Shit. Oh, man. I'm going to say... Oh, man. Oh, man. Maybe Tan. What? Yeah. And then it would be Tan, Karamo, Jonathan, Anthony. JVN's number one. Yeah, yeah, I know. You like you like Jonathan. Um. Queer Eye, season three, coming soon, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, okay. I'm hoping they come to Victorville. Um, 
No, they should come uh, to Barstow. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to get Eric Wilkinson on Queer Eye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to have him fix up C-47. <laughs> um, okay, now we're going to jump into uh, this segment. How did we meet? Uh, we met in high school, uh, 2013. It was our sophomore year. Um, two friend, well, at the time they were just like, like, I guess you like knew them, Yes. but they were my friends now, mutual friends, uh, Aaron and Violet, they were like, yeah, shout out. Um, like, I don't remember whose end it was on. Like, I think Aaron told you to talk to me and Violet told me to talk to you. And then we ended up doing that. How did Violet know about me? I don't know. She probably saw you in cool band shirts. I was like, yeah, I see him in cool band shirts. And I was like, okay. Thanks, Violet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because I remember it was Violet who was like, yeah, the kid's cool. And uh, at I the time. I talking to her. Yeah. Uh, at the time, uh, I wanted to start a band. And she's like, yeah, he plays drums. He knows cool music. And I was like, cool. That's good enough for me. <laughs> he yeah, doesn't have to be good. He just has to be good at, enough. Uh, it was very spare at Encore. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're like. I think I don't think you're like searching very hard. No, it's you're just not. like, all right, cool. No, it's like you're the first person that like is like, oh, we're looking for a drummer. It's like that kid plays drums, and it was like, oh, well, this worked out. Yeah, <laughs> and then at practice, that's when the planets aligned, and all was right in the world. Now, <laughs> now, now here we are, five years later, doing a goddamn podcast. <laughs> doing a podcast. Um, now, your impact on the scene is pretty vi- uh, pretty vital. Okay. Um, I would sure. like to say, um, let's see, let's think about this as a kingdom. I'd say <laughs> the high desert kingdom. I would say you're like a high, like a high shield, like a, like a high, a high knight, um, a king's guard. I think kay. you're like king's guard. Sure. And the king is rock and roll itself. Yes, king is rock and roll. King is rock and roll. Kingdom and I, is HD. And I, and I serve. And I serve her. Yes, we serve. We sort swerve. Serve, serve her Majesty, yes. rock and roll. Yeah. I would say you're very. You're a part of the King's Guard. Okay. I think you you would die for the rock and roll scene up here. Thank you. Yes. And I also think that um, you do a lot of work for it. Thank you. Um, now this is not just because. We're homies, but <laughs> I mean, uh, you're there at C47. Yeah. Prepping, setting up. Yeah. At shows. Yes. House shows, you're setting stuff up. You let people borrow your gear. Yes. Constantly. Uh huh. Um, you're always shouting out bands on your Twitter or your social medias. Yeah. You're always posting flyers, even yes. on like your Twitter. Like, I know your Instagram is mainly like your bands, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, wise, like on my stories, I'll do you'll that. post it. Just because, like, I don't want, like, I was thinking about, like, posting, like, flyers of, like, if, like, just, like, my friends' bands were playing, but I didn't want there to be confusion, because I feel like, okay, I think this is, okay, this is, like, kind of, like, a funny story. Um, There's this girl, I'm not going to say who, I think she thinks I'm in County Fair. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. Like, it's, like, uh, you want to bleep it? (laughs) No, because you'll probably forget to bleep it. Okay, yeah, 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 you're right. Just tell me later. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, well, I'll tell you who it is later. But um, yeah, like, cause you know how like, it, I just, I can't tell if it's a joke or not. Like, it's just like it's like, ha ha. You look like that dude in County Fair, and I'm like, does this girl think I'm in County Fair? See, the thing is like, um, I say we're very hands on with everything in the okay, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say like, so I can I can see the, the confusion and the misconception. Yeah, of yeah, I guess. In, like I mean, unless she's you, saying I, I mean, look like you Eli, being, you being in the licks is like <laughs> real. That's just not like not like. Oh. Can I tell that story? Uh, when I get to that. Okay. Oh, so you you have that written down? Yeah, I have it written down. <laughs> cool. Um, but cool, yeah, cool, no. Cool. Um, yeah, you're all over the place up here, and uh, yeah, I think people realize like how much you do, but uh, there's a lot of underlying shit that goes down too. Like he's always there for recording when I'm there. I do the most for the fucking culture by just existing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. <laughs> I just blanked. It's cool. No, but uh, yeah, no, he's always there recording. Yeah, I try uh, to hang out. I always tell him like schedules and everything. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm recording this band there. And yeah, like he'll, he'll tell there. me like when he's like recording or just like if there's like. You know, just like shows happening, and like I just show out. Yeah, just well, cause like I got nothing fucking better to do, and like yeah, we'll know. be like, you going to this show? I'm like, 
Yeah, fuck you, why not? <laughs> yeah, it's like, they don't even get asked. It's like, are you going to the show? It's just like, it's like... Caesar's going to the show. Yeah, like, they, they ask me to leave shows. That's how often I'm there. Now, um, going back to the topic of tambourine. Well, we never talked about tambourine, but now we're yeah. talking about tambourine. No, we're talking about tambourines. <laughs> okay, we're talking about tambourines. How does it feel being a full-time tambourine player for the Licks? Uh, it's great. Um, How's the Licks clout? It's amazing. It's amazing. I know, and uh, being in the Licks, it's brought you uh Yeah, very yeah. Being, being an official member of the Licks has brought me... <laughs> treasures and joy uh, and wonderful fans. Tons of puss. Tons of puss. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. So, with being... Can you share some of uh, the treasures you get from being in the Licks? Well, okay, well, full disclosure, I'm not actually in the Licks. If I'm at a Licks show, I'm playing tambourine, though. I haven't played tambourine for the leagues at the past few shows just because schedules have been strange and we ended up playing like a few shows where they were playing out of town so i haven't been their tambourine boy for the past few shows but yeah anytime i'm at a league show i'm playing tambourine it's like they asked me to do it once and now it's just like i do it every time now um and yeah you know i like it you know i, I know like, and it's it's been so like gracious to you that fans have come up to you <laughs> yeah um this is this is uh, I love telling this story. Um, I was at Juice It Up buying a juice, and um, you know I go to you know pick up my juice from the the lady who had made it, and she was like, "Hey, the barista." I don't know if you'd call them barista. <laughs> the jurista. <laughs> the juice. We'll call them the juice. Yeah. yeah. I went to go pick up pick up my juice from the juice, and uh, she was like, "Hey." Um, do you play in bands up here? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Uh, I was in a band called Antisocialite. Uh, I play bass in a band called Reclaim. And she was like, no, I don't think that's it. Um, oh, you play tambourine in the licks. And I was like, there you go. I was like, yeah. She's like, you were really drunk on top of that bass amp and your glasses fell off and hit me in the face. And I picked them up and gave them back to you. Oh, I've never heard this part of the story. Oh, I didn't tell you that? Yeah. Um, I was I was kind of drunk, and I was standing on top of Jimmy's bass amp, and I was playing the tambourine. It was at a, it was at a house show, I think it was the one at, not, it was at Chad, one of Chad's relatives' house. And, um, yeah, I was, like, really drunk. I was playing the tambourine on top of the bass amp, and I was, like, you know, moving my, my head around, and my glasses flew off and fucking bonked this girl in the face. But no, she handed them back to me, and I was like, "Thank you, my sweet angel. You saved me on this day." Amen. Yeah. Um. Yeah, lake shows get pretty wild. Yeah, pretty wild. Um. Shout out! Shout out to them. Yeah, September twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah, September twenty fourth. I was just about to plug them. Um, uh, please listen to their music. They're up and coming, uh, very talented young men, um, and I would die for them. All right, moving on to the next segment. This is a special segment. Okay. FMK. Reclaim, Belladonna, or Antisocialite? FMK? Fuck, Mary Kill. <laughs> Fuck, Mary Kill. Uh, what was it again? Reclaim, Belladonna, or Antisocialite? Uh, I would... You said Reclaim, Belladonna, Antisocialite. Yep. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. All right. so you're hurting I, feelings I would, all the way around. Yeah, I don't care. It's because, like, we're all in that fucking same band. Like, I don't give yeah, a fuck. Yeah, the three of us. I would marry Reclaim, because that's, that's my baby. Everyone knows that. I'm not hurting anyone's feelings by saying that. You know, that's yeah. that's set in stone. I think I'd kill Belladonna. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no. Well, I mean, if it really came down to it. Because, like, Belladonna is... Like, Belladonna, of course, is my band, and I do care about, you know, that band. But Let them hear it. It's... Alex does all the writing for that. So it's yeah. not really a creative outlet for me. You know, it's just the band I'm in, if that makes sense. Whereas, like, Antisocialite was, like, a project I was really involved in and really cared about, you know? Yeah. So it's not like I hate Belladonna because I don't. It's just, like, I don't know. I Yeah, I don't know. And then, obviously, <laughs> fuck Antisocialite. Yeah, fuck Antisocialite. Um... <coughs> I think I would fuck uh, Reclaim. Yeah. Um, Marry Belladonna. Okay. And kill Antisocial. Yeah, because Antisocial is already dead. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like 
but in the world where all three of those coexist, that's that's what I would pick. Okay. Um. Let's see. What do we got? What do I want to talk about? I don't know. I'm trying to. Th- I'm just looking at the list. All right. Wait, no, I don't want to talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. Okay. So back when I was heavy in the drinking scene. <laughs> Not um, anymore, Mr. Straight Edge. Yeah. I saw the light. Yeah. Okay. Um, born again Christian. Born again virgin, dog. <laughs> there you go. Um, We invented this drink. Oh, you want to talk about Code Blue? Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's a phenomenon amongst the, it's, the kids. I would say it's like a, it's like an urban legend at this point. Yes, because it, like it comes around. It comes yeah, cause, in waves. Because Code Blue was invented sometime around like 2015? Yes. Yeah, you know, I would say maybe, no, dude, I think it was 2014. No, nah, I think it was around that. No. Oh, no, uh, you're right. No, no, no. It, we were in this house when we invented. I think it was Bradfest when we invented it. No, we invented it way before because it wasn't Bradfest because we were drinking a lot. Oh, of yeah, no, no, yeah. It okay. was that year. It was that year. Okay, so yeah, we'll say like early 2015. Anyways. Early 2016, dog. Oh, yeah, whatever. Um, ay, ay, ay. Dude, my fucking... Brain doesn't work. So you drinking that monster? <laughs> it's rotting my brain. <laughs> okay, my heart's code blue. Too fast what what is code blue? I'll put the I'll put the ingredients in the bio. <laughs> yeah, no, no need, no need. It, it'll be on my blog. <laughs> no, I want to put it in there so the kids at home can yeah. experience this. Oh, we should make an instructional video. <laughs> yeah, we'll do like a minute video. We'll we'll put it on the YouTube. I'm down on the YouTube. <laughs> Hell yeah. Anyways, yeah. Um, code blue is um. You go to your local food for less. You buy what is called a blue raspberry thirst rocker. It is zero percent fruit juice, uh, sugary as shit. What does that mean? Zero percent fruit juice. There's no fruit in it. It's just punch. But how do they get the fucking blue raspberry flavor? It's all artificial. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's why it's called fruit punch because they can't call it juice if there's no juice in it. Holy shit. Yeah, it's a little bit of trivia for you guys. <laughs> Enjoy yo, that. Yo, Anyways. honestly. <laughs> fuck America. <laughs> this is fucked up. You know what's funny? In the 90s, uh, there was a huge like ad for Kool-Aid back in the day. And like they were really selling this. Uh, like they're, like their selling point on the Kool-Aid at one point. It was like now with 3% juice. What? Yeah. Because I guess before that it was all artificial, and I guess like in like the time of like the mid, uh, early nineties, there was like we we're gonna come across as like a healthier option, so they literally bumped it to three percent natural fruit juice. Is it still that? No, I, 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 like, I have no clue. That actually. shit must have sucked. Yeah, well, I mean, artificial shit tastes okay, what's good. What's your favorite Kool Aid flavor? Oh shit, um, I like mixing mine. I would say I like the blue raspberry lemonade one. I like mixing. Uh, the black cherry with the lemon lime. That's pretty good. Did one time you fucking mixed black cherry with watermelon. That shit sucked. No, that shit was good. <laughs> that shit sucked. I need to start making Kool Aid again. Yeah, we're getting back. You should have been making Kool Aid all fucking summer, dude. Yeah. All right. So, code anyways, blue. yeah, code blue. Code blue is when okay, yeah, you go to your food flesh, you buy what is called the blue raspberry thirst rocker. It's just a hundred fruit juice. It's zero fruit juice, hundred percent. It's just sugar. It's just a sugary fucking drink, right? You pour out, you know, like however much, you you pour out like a quarter of it, I would say, a little more than a quarter of it. Yeah, yeah, and then you pour an entire bottle of UV blue into it and give it a good shake. I, I recommend freezing it overnight so you have like a good slush consistency in the morning and you you know take a big old swig of that and it tastes like juice it doesn't taste like anything yeah the, it, you like, cannot taste like the, the alcohol. alcohol does not have a taste within that, it it made it made it really easy to drink because I hate vodka yeah and with UV being vodka it was just like okay this is really good yeah, you can you, you can just fucking pound like, it and you won't taste shit yeah, and like so you don't know your limit and then yeah. like it's like it's like a truck just like yeah. an hour later it's like mm. yeah but what's funny is anybody who's come in contact with code blue they have a different hangover like everyone has yeah, like, a, like different a different reaction effect. to it uh whenever i drink code blue uh i will wake up at like 8 a.m like sharp like bright and early in the morning i'll feel amazing like i won't have a hangover no headache no nothing 
I'll like throw up black liquid like three or four times, but I'll I'll feel amazing. It's fucking the strangest thing. It's like yeah, a phenomenon. And then, and then same thing. I'll be up in early, but I'll just shit black. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, our buddy <laughs> uh, Donovan, yeah. it like knocks him out. No, no, no. Or what does it do to him? He had, okay, like he kind of had like the same reaction of like waking up like early in the morning, like feeling amazing, but he gets a hangover like two days afterwards. I thought that was Austin. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, oh, no, Donovan just sleeps all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he Donovan just will fall asleep, and he'll sleep for, like, 48 hours or some shit. Yeah, like, he'll and sleep. Then, yeah, and then Austin, uh, he was the one who would have, yeah. like, the hangover, like, two days after. Yeah, he, like, I remember partying at Bradfest yeah. and drinking all of it, and uh, he was, like, feeling fine the next day, and then, like, the mon- or the Monday following yeah, he, he was just, like, just he's like, like, oh. Yeah, he was, like, I, like, he's, like, I feel like I'm hungover, and I was, like, dude, the fucking, I think the devil has his hands in the code blue. What hap- What happens to uh, Rufus? Oh, man. I don't know, because um, every time we drink code blue, he dips, like, kind of, like, early in the morning. We don't get to see him. He leaves. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> code blue drives him to leave. <laughs> like, every time, blue every time he back. drinks code blue, he, like, wakes up in the morning. He's, like, I got to get the fuck out of this <laughs> desert. They're making me drink this shit. Um, yeah, no, but, yeah, touching on the Bradfest. Yeah, code blue. Is the champagne of champagnes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bradfest. Uh, yeah, I I drank almost all of a gallon. <laughs> you drank of half a gallon of Code Blue. Yeah, and uh, it, it was weird because like no, but I, what's funny about it is like we were surrounded by a bunch of our friends, and um, you literally <laughs> <laughs> turned to everyone and you're like, "Should I chug the rest of this Code Blue?" And I, thought, I wasn't. I thought, it was, I thought it was you that was. No, 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 no. You turned around. I remember like, I came in from the garage. <laughs> no, no, no. You came in uh, with it, and you're like, I should chug the rest of this. And I wasn't drinking that night because I had work at 10 a.m. the next day. Yeah. Everyone was like, no, Brad, don't fucking do it, dude. Don't do it. You were like, I was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was just there, like, I literally just said once, I was like, yeah, Brad, do it. And then you were like, okay. <laughs> then you yeah, fucking I kind of like just like you opened up my that throat. Bitch. And I was like chilling. It felt like 30 seconds. <laughs> and I just remember just like tilting my head up and drinking it. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah. And everyone's just like. Like mouths open, just like oh my yeah. god! And I was then, just sitting there laughing. I was like, because like I don't, I don't know, because I like, should have been worried. Of, I like it could have just totally been like I could have killed my friend. <laughs> nah, because like I remember like throughout the night it was kind of getting spacey. Because yeah. like I was like whoa, and like I just remember like <laughs> going out there and there was like people making out in my garage. I was like whoa, this is weird. And then yeah. I remember coming in with a code blue and chugging that. And then I remember just like after that laughing blacking out and then apparently I passed out on my trampoline yes you did and then I remember like after uh, blacking out after drinking that I remember walking through my back uh, my sliding glass th- mm-hmm. or walking through uh, into my uh, my dining room yeah my kitchen area and then tripping over Little Ray in my room and then falling asleep yes I, I don't remember anything between it and apparently I was doing shit <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have known because I I fell asleep at around like midnight probably because I had to get up early for work at 10 a.m. And what's funny is Zini had to get up early for work too, and we both like fell asleep next to each other. Neither of our alarms went off. No, okay, here's what happened. Yeah, I remember we both waking set, up and seeing you guys. We both set our fucking alarms for like 10 p.m. So we were both fucking late for work that day. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, no, Code Blue. Like, I remember waking up at, like, 10.30 and, like, being like, Zini, we fucked up, dude. Yeah, and then I remember me and Caesar and D tried to remake the Code Red. Oh, God. It was so bad. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, he went to Winco, right? And he grabbed, like, the Thirst Rocker equivalent, but it was uh, Cherry. No, no, it, no, he got the Thirst Rocker? No, it wasn't a Thirst Rocker. I swear it was No, a it rocker. wasn't. Dude, we don't carry Cherry. Thirst Rocker. We got Tropical Punch. That's the red one. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah it, I think it was like a Winco brand. Maybe it was Walmart. It was like a brand I hadn't seen, but it was UV Cherry. And like that shit just tasted like fucking NyQuil. Yeah, and we still you, we still drank the whole yeah. gallon. Yeah, it was raining. <laughs> it was raining. I don't know why we, we decided to go outside to chug. Oh, because we didn't want to throw up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. We're going to do this outside just in case we fucking throw up. We were fucking dumb fucking drinkers. Yeah, I remember, there's a lot of good drinking stories. Like, oh god, the first time I drank with you guys, I was having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, 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 it was a, uh, it was me, you, and Donovan, and um, 
it was the first time Brad had ever drank with us. Like, like me and Donovan at the time, like we weren't like heavy drinkers. It was just like we would drink like every now and then, because it was like something you know something to do. Like we don't we're fucking bored, you know. Um, and uh, one day we're just like Brad, just come over. You can crash at my house. You know, you'll be safe. Just come drink with us, and we'll just fall asleep and you know high five a lot. I don't know. Um, and like I just remember, like as the night progressed, like Brad was fucking mega fucking slumped on this love seat that he's have in my living room, and he just like rolls his head over to me, and he's like, "I now know why people drink. This is awesome. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> You're just like, this is awesome. <laughs> That's when I was being lied to. <laughs> I was in a I was in a haze." <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fucking night though. Yeah, no, was, we were just laughing. I, I think we played Jenga. Yeah, and we tried to play Quiplash. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't figure it out. I was like, <laughs> Quiplash. Yeah, Quiplash. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Yeah. Um, let's do this one. Best show you've been to, local and non-local. Um, okay. Um, fuck, I don't know. And the the non-local can be like. Oh yeah, yeah, other yeah, yeah. DIY spots or concerts. Yeah, well, I'm gonna do like like, mm, I'm gonna break this down to like a few kind of things. Like, um, can I do it like by like era of like band? Because I want to kind of do like like my okay, favorite bands. Like, like okay, daily favorite daily show is Bradfest. No, 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 I'm talking about other. Sh- like yeah, I know. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I'm doing a thing. Okay, I'm so favorite it. my favorite daily show was Bradfest. My favorite antisocial show was when we played program. Favorite reclaim show. Oh, motherfucker, I'm talking about not. I playing know in that's a band. what I know. I'm getting there. I'm said I'm doing a thing. Favorite reclaim show. I want to say the Leisha show. That one was a lot of fun. I think I like that one a little bit more than uh, Local Man. Awful show. It's close. Okay, and then favorite local band. Like I didn't play, but I watched was probably. Um, oh, oh, that's tough. That off. Um, well, okay. The first time I saw the licks at a house show, that was fucking. That that was a that was a cool memory because it was the first time I had seen Chad perform with the licks, and like me and Chad, like we kind of go. Oh, we we go back with Chad, back to like twenty, twenty thirteen. No, twenty fourteen. We didn't start hanging out with them until anyways. The summer. Um, yeah, like we go, we go back with Chad, and uh, he was in a band called Rain in July back in the day, and like he's just he's really grown as a front man. And then watching him with the licks, like I was like, damn, this is fucking dope. Like I thought, I thought that was really dope. Um, um, what was another good one? County Fair at the Cocoon is another one. That of my was favorites. great. That was a fucking great show. I remember we bent that pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pit was um, huge. Let me think. Uh, Turnstile and Angel Dust is one of my favorite shows I've been to. Oh, I don't know if I like the... That one or the Angel Dust one with uh, Big Bite and Bug I don't and know. On Man. That was a good one, too. I felt like the, the second Angel Dust show was a fight. It was just like trying to like yeah, survive. Yeah, we, we, we were getting our asses beat. <laughs> but no, nah, that one was good, too. Um, yeah. Uh, I've seen Streetlight a bunch of times. Nah, you know what? The Aquabats. That was a fucking dope show. I was fucking whiskey drunk too. <laughs> that was That's amazing. Good. Uh what's funny is uh Dog Party played that show too and I went and bought their record and uh I was really drunk, right? And uh I went and got was it and then Gwenny and what's her name? No, I don't remember, dude. Pink haired. Yeah, that's her name. But they were both there, right? When yeah. I when I went to you know, buy my record, and I was like, "Oh, hey, cool dog party." You know, I like your guys' music. Uh, can you sign this dumb fucking? Well, it's not a dumb record. I actually really like it. Um, listen to the song "Round and Round" by Dog Party. That's my favorite off of their recent release. Lucy. Lucy. Okay, yeah. Um, I was like, "Can you guys please sign this?" And they were like, "Yeah, absolutely." So they signed my record, and I was like walking backwards while still talking to them because they were trying to like talk to like they're trying to you know sell other shit. But, like, we were still, like, kind of, like, in a conversation. And I fucking, like, totally, like, tripped all over this dude and, like, almost fell on my ass. And I was, like, I really just fucking embarrassed myself in front of these two girls. <laughs> <laughs> now they're not going to fucking talk to you. I was, like, now I'm going to be single forever. But I didn't I didn't have that kind of 
intention. Motive. I didn't have that motive. I wasn't going to be like, I'm going to go over, buy a record, get an autograph, and <laughs> find a wife. <laughs> find a wife. A wife acquired. Um, if nah, you haven't caught on yet, Caesar is desperate, and he needs <laughs> a girlfriend. Dude, slow down. Oh, there's, there's, that's in here. Don't worry. We'll get to that. Um, let's see. Did that. Did that. Okay. Uh, word on the street is that you're Eric Wilkinson Jr. E- yeah. Yeah. Um, that's me. Even though <laughs> Eric hates me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like how Eric is just taking up the role as dad. It's just like, yeah, like. And he's got to be like, he's always got to be like, he's like, he's the dad where he's like, he can hang out with the kids, but like, he's still got to be the dad. So like, yeah. he'll be like, so he's like, he's like a, he's like an uncle. N- no. Like, yeah. Like he doesn't have like, cause like, like a dad, ha- no, uncle. cause the dad has to take that role of like actual discipline, which is like, makes you be like, man, I hate my dad. Whereas like us, like an uncle yeah, is just right. like, yeah. not boys. But you know he won't actually do anything. Yeah, he'll he'll he's the one who like give you beer and then he'll be like, <laughs> you shouldn't be drinking that. What as soon as you get busted? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you're like, what? Yeah, exactly. Like he's just like a cool uncle. Yeah, like but, uh, yeah, because like we went to Denny's with him recently. Yeah, and like we were probably in the facility for like thirty <laughs> seconds, and he was like, boys. <laughs> yeah, and he was <laughs> like, now boys. <laughs> he's just like settle he down, just boys. Kept nodding his head. He's yeah, just like, <sighs> and I feel like he he's like when Chris is around, he's like very like. Oh yeah, dude. He's oh, just like no, no, no. When 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 Eric's like when it's just us and Eric, he he's like, he's like you know he's like Uncle Eric. Yeah. But when he's around Krista, that's like, that's Papa Eric. Yeah, he's like he's like like he's, he's a little he's like, bit more strict. It. And then he's like he's like I need to prove to my woman <laughs> that, <laughs> that I'm a strict boy. And then I don't know. When, when she's gone, I think that shit was funny, huh? <laughs> um, I used to I, would, I fucking I love frying. Eric with like the Ligma jokes. <laughs> uh, Eric, Eric Eric Wilkinson didn't believe that uh, chonker was a real term. Yeah, yeah. Because I was saying, like, I was a, uh, I was telling him that um, I have a a half pit bull, half uh, Chihuahua pup. Her name is Rosie. Uh, I'm sorry, Chihuahua. I didn't know she was Chihuahua. Yeah, yeah, half Chihuahua. Uh, um, and she's she's fat, dude. She's a fucking chonker, dude. Like a straight up chonker, and I was like, "Yeah, you do this, my little pup. She's a little chonker, right?" And he's like, "That's not a word." And I was like, "No, it's a fucking word." And he was like, "He's like, no, it's not." I was like, "Yeah, it's like kind of like a meme." And he texted me earlier today. He's like, "You know what? I'm a man. I'm able to admit when I'm wrong." And then he sent me like a cat meme where it said chonker, and I was like, I "Told um, you, you fucking old man. <laughs> Time is now, old man." <laughs> Uncle Rico, that's Eric. <laughs> Eric is Uncle Rico. I and love you, Eric. And then your kip. Yeah, I'll be Kip. And then Lil Ray's fucking Napoleon. Yeah, because I chat with babes all the time online, just not in person. Um, If you uh, haven't noticed, Caesar plays guitar too. Yeah. I. I my I, question I, for you is, do you like playing guitar or bass more? Um, Or is it more of like a depends thing? Uh, I, I guess it depends. Not, I don't know. Um, do old people wear diapers? It <laughs> depends. No, it's what kind of... Diapers do they wear? What well, kind? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I feel like guitar takes like a lot more focus, you know, and like I, I love playing bass. No, and, uh, especially you- well, like um, I feel like I'm better at bass than I am at guitar, but like playing in like a band like Reclaim, where like I don't have to like rip it up on bass all the time, I kind of just get to like entertain more. I get to be more active. Whereas, like, if I'm playing guitar, I can still be active, but I got to focus a little bit more. You know what I mean? Now, what if you were to play guitar and reclaim? Would you be as crazy? Or would you um, be more? Yeah, yeah, you know, I would still be as active, but just not as active as it could be. Now, singing and playing bass, how hard is that? It's not hard. Well, I, I mean, you know, know. just, just like, like doing anything, you know, it takes practice. How about guitar and singing? Uh, it just depends on what you're playing. Like, if you're just playing, like, chords, it's easy. But, like, I couldn't fucking imagine trying to play a lead and singing at the same time. Uh, yeah. Fucking. All right. Now, there's been some confusion. Now, you're... Oh, wait. Not confusion. Your favorite anime... Yeah. Is... Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
Now there's all there's this big fight on okay. who's the best girl. Oh, Ray, I and Ami Ray, easy. Second is Misato. Yes. No. Yeah. Then uh, then Oscar, right? No. Uh, um, who's that? Other? Oh wait, uh, what's her name? The the doctor. Ritsko. Yeah. No. Would you put you wouldn't put Ritsko? No, she's four. There's oh god, I always forget her name. She's uh one of the ones that like does like the computer shit. I got uh, I oh god I'm gonna hate myself for forgetting her name because I was literally thinking about my, it. yeah my top wife is third. Pen. Oh yeah fuck yeah I want to get a tattoo of him do do it <laughs> yeah I have a I have an Evangelion tattoo on my hand so what is that for what is it this is the um well it's like the it's the mask of Adam but it's also like the logo for uh I've always said Seal but I guess it's Sele and they're like the corporation that like runs Nerve I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. It's um, ambiguous. In one sentence, can you describe Neon Genesis Evangelion? Um, it's about giant robots and depressed kids. All right. Let's now. I'm gonna give my description. Okay. Um, sad kids doing bad shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're doing good. Well. <laughs> they're doing debatable. <laughs> they're doing some debatable shit. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I want that to be like like if I ever get like like you know like the Hannibal Burris uh fucking Eric Andres game where he's like man what are you doing you doing some cool shit that's what you I want it to be like that like you're doing some debatable shit <laughs> it's like I'm on the fence with what you're doing yeah I I gotta finish that yeah yeah you gotta um now uh. We went to Encore Shit. together. Yes, Encore we did. Encore together. And um, it's very obvious obvious that we were untouchable there. <laughs> yeah, we were gods. <laughs> but, I mean, you still got kicked out. But <laughs> yes, I did. I did. But but that's non- nonetheless, <laughs> we were untouchable. Yeah. We-, <laughs> <laughs> we were allegedly untouchable. <laughs> Wait, what? We were, we were, so, we were allegedly untouchable. Yeah. Or as in, yeah. We're, yeah, like, apparently, okay. uh, we, we're, we are, like, I think we just did shit, and people were just like, yeah, I don't know how you got away with it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I, uh, yeah, we did some fucked up shit. Yeah, like, like um, I'm, I'm not surprised I got kicked out. I mean, but I was right there with you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was the fall man. Yeah, I took the fall, man. I, I took you the bullet for, for you. Yeah, 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 I took the bullet. I was, I was the... Yeah. I mean, we would we would always skip class and yeah. go to the music room and just hang yeah, out. I, I was the folly of us. <laughs> there, there was like, he need, he plays drums. He, we need him. Yeah, it's like we need him. It's like that. Like if I if I would have played bass for encore, I would have graduated. But I decided to Play rip trombone. the trombone. I was no. like, Scott okay, is the so future. I remember us at lunch. We'd be pretty loud and obnoxious, and then yeah, we'd always. do like the dancing shit. And like we when we dance, we like. Teachers were like run into us. Remember that one time, where or was it? I was doing the hardcore dancing, and that teacher was coming out of the building, <laughs> and I was like almost swinging on her. Oh, Do I don't remember, remember that? that. I don't. It was Miss Essie's room. Where were you saying out? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and she was like, <laughs> she kind of like jolted she was like, back. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, Breh. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then uh, we'd hide under the band room. Uh, the band under the band risers. risers yeah. And do I used to fucking always shit. ditch PE too. D- yeah, you just go I hang used to out fucking ditch room. geometry a lot too. And then, um, and I would just fucking go to the band room. Mr. Moreno would just be like, "Aren't you supposed to be in class?" No, dude. <laughs> what's funny is, um, like I would always ditch PE, but our PE coach was cool with it. He would just give Shout me out an to A. Charlie Ham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't work there anymore, so who cares? Yeah. No. Um. Anyways, but yeah. So I would always ditch PE, and then sometimes I would ditch geometry, and like Moreno would be like. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> and like I'm just like, oh, I have PE right now. <laughs> he'd so, be like, he'd be like, oh right, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's pretty fit. Two PE classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, uh, there was where was one time where it was like raining and we had this like dumbass thing we had to do for this our school. It was like this whole zombie thing. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, we were on this yeah, the whole the like 9/11 world. like it was planned. <laughs> and, like Bush did 9/11 and all yeah, that. Yeah. Um. Our buddy Jermaine. Like, his, like, running joke for, like, that entire year was, like, Bush to 9-11, you know, like, that fucking classic meme, right? And, like, it just became, like, a meme amongst, like, the band kids in our jazz class. 
and uh, we were <laughs> we were standing underneath the uh, it was like this like like the heater thing because it was cold as shit and it was raining, <laughs> and our band teacher fucking walks up with like a fucking heart of fucking gold, dude, and he was just like, Bush did do nine eleven. <laughs> And, like, we all were like, hell yeah, like, haha, this is fucking funny. And then, like, he just got way too into it. He was like, there's just so much yeah, evidence. Yeah, he, like, he he's like, like, Dick Cheney made fucking millions. <laughs> and we're just like, whoa, dude. Like, we're like, what yeah, did we get our we fucking got back selves to the into? He was still rambling about it. He's like, there's just so much evidence. He's like, this, this, this. And I was like, what the, like, we fucking, we opened up the can of worms. <laughs> yeah, no, like, and then, like, we'd, like, throw food across the room into each other's mouths. Like, I remember that one yeah, time you yeah, got the gummy yeah. bear. Fucking epic. <laughs> and then there was like some like gross hot chocolate that Jermaine left over. Oh uh, yeah. Didn't we- someone get it spilled all over them? Yeah, no, remember Moreno spilled it under his desk? <laughs> or no, like Jermaine spilled it somewhere. Yeah. And it was like like chunky and gross and yeah. we were uh Yeah, how m- a lot of people have thrown it behind then, their banner room. And then yeah, a lot of people pissed behind there too. Yeah, pee, yeah. And then uh No one's ever shit. And then Nutcracker, we were just running wild. It yeah. was just fucking mayhem, and then oh, I remember yeah. uh, we had uh, a Nintendo sixty four and a TV under the drum yeah, underneath the drum for riser. Michael Jackson. Uh, we used to like fuck with everybody in the like band room. <laughs> yeah. We used to there our our teacher our old teacher Mr. Navhan. Yeah, I wasn't in class, but uh, you guys were practicing for Christmas recital. Okay, right? and what song were you guys playing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what i'm talking about uh, yeah um yeah mr navhan like god god bless him he's he's incredible um i guess like he just kind of like he just fucked up what he was supposed to say you know <laughs> and he was like he's like he's like i need you guys to pull out santa claus is going to town <laughs> It was so funny. And, and like, I, like, and then he did like, I guess like it was me and like Steven, like we were the only ones that caught it. Right. Mm-hmm. And Steven was just like, okay, that was weird. And I was fucking dying. And like, I was busting up laughing and like, I'm like trying to play my fucking trombone when I'm like dying. <laughs> and like, the, he like, he's like, what the, like, like after like he cut it off. Cause like whatever. He's like, what the fuck are you laughing at? And I was like, you literally said Santa Claus is going to town and expecting me to like maintain composure. Like, fuck you. Yeah. And like, yeah, he, they they were cool. They were always just like chill with us and yeah. like um i remember uh we were never taught like proper ben etiquette so like yeah. when the a piece is playing and your part's not playing you're supposed to stand still yeah uh, and like silently one, like yeah. count yeah there was one one song that the percussion didn't play and we're like <laughs> all laying down on the ground <laughs> sleeping <laughs> just yeah. chilling yeah and like we used to just like watch videos and like do like fucking like blast beats and like yeah. Just fuck around, and there was this one time uh, our buddy David <laughs> was doing like some like hardcore song, mm-hmm. and he was like doing the crab core, and he was jumping up and down, and he fucking fell on the marimba, <laughs> and it made this like big. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck. It yeah. literally just it was like as comedic as possible, just. <laughs> and then Mr. M just looked up from his fucking computer. He's like, "What are you doing?" And yeah, Mr. M was a fucking shit too. Like yeah, like he would he, he would just swear freely. Yeah, no, well, like he would do it. Like he's like, "You guys better." Get into it. <laughs> he's like, God, what did he do at Six Flags? He's like, I am he's, not fucking around. Yeah, he was like, he's like, I have fucking had it. Yeah. And Were I'm we like, doing anything bad at Six Flags? No, I just, I just made it up an example. Uh, Six yeah. Flags was fucking dope though. Um. All right. Yeah. But yeah. Encore. Our bitch. Yeah. Oh, student store. We used to fucking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, we weren't. I don't think we were friends yet, but. Um, one time I received twenty dollars for my birthday from a friend. Yeah, we were we were friends. And oh, okay, okay. Was it? No, 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 no. Because this was this was my freshman year. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. yeah. So we hadn't been friends yet. I remember when you you did buy the the other one the other time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought like twenty. Well, I bought ten Arizonas and I bought ten Power Rates, and I just like held them all in my backpack and I drank every. They were all Arizona green teas. I drank every single one. And all the power aids in one day, and I got fucking food poisoning from the, from just drinking all that liquid, and I was pissing and shitting and vomiting for three <laughs> days straight after that. And I remember you did it again. Yeah, I did it again. And it was just like the worst. Yeah, I did the same. It was the same results. I was just, just food poisoning essentially. 
Yeah, we like to like throw food at each other too. Like, there's this one video of like Caesar filming us, like taking a video, but it's like selfie form. And I'm throwing a oh, biscuit. Oh yeah, yeah. The, and I'm no, throwing, it was a pancake. No, it was a biscuit. No, it was a pancake. At school. Remember, I threw a biscuit at Garbanzo. It bounced <laughs> oh, right off his head. Oh, I thought you were talking about the pancake. That's in your video. living room. That's a good one. Okay, um, we'll move on for that. Yeah. Um, Stop I talking wrote about down, high school. Now this is very. I think this is a heavy topic. Scene beef is stupid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, scene beef is always going to exist, you know. Yes. Because dudes are fucking dudes, you know, and it's like it's like human nature. Uh, what's stupid is fake scene beef. Know what I yeah. mean? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't know. I'm not fucking picking up what you're putting like down. Like the whole like, like county fair hates reclaim, reclaim hates county fair thing. Yeah, I remember that going on, and I, I think I just think like the whole that fake scene shit and like I just think scene beef is dumb because yeah, dumb. with a scene this small and so pure well even still like like our our scene is very small yeah like you know but like, still there's there's C47 and there's like two separate like house show scenes you know so like it's still like take your pick yeah, like let's say scenario like let's say Reclaim does hate County Fair which full disclosure we don't you know I love County Fair you love County Fair yeah um but let's say County Fair hates us, we hate them, we can't play shows together. Then it's like, okay, um, County Fair can play C-47 shows and maybe Reclaim will start playing house shows. Vice versa. You know, you did, that shit doesn't have to exist. You know, just be a yeah. fucking adult about it. Yeah, the thing is Find like... Find something new. I think since the scene is so small and so pure, like, we just don't have time and energy for it. Yeah, I think exactly. we need to focus on bringing everybody up instead of putting everyone down. Yeah. Like, I try to be as, like, cool with everyone as possible. Yes, yeah, because, like, like, I'm very, I'm very all about community-based. And I, I yeah. think that we all need to rise together mm-hmm. because we are a small scene and we are growing bigger. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's very cool seeing it, like, uh, go like yeah it's literally just like it's happening right now yes like, and literally I think, as we speak I think it's just happening scene beef and all that and I think like with the scene being bigger there is more predators and people coming out that shouldn't be a part of it yeah like like yeah like being that like you know we're we you know we're we're in a band you yes. know we have the you know the fucking privilege to be on a stage and to perform for people, you know, we have a platform to some degree. Yes. And I feel like that gives us kind of like a foot in the community. And I think it's important to kind of like not to be a role model because that's like a I lot of pressure. I, but like I just saying. to kind of I think be cool, you I know, think for if, everyone's sake, you know, I to think, make a safe scene. I think um, all the bands that are in the scene are very influential to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like. If we're giving off PMA, positive mental attitude, yeah. then they're going to take that because Reclaim is a heavy hardcore band. Yeah. But we write about uh, anxiety and depression yeah, like and a lot of, a lot of mental illness. It. And we've had a lot of people come up to us talking talking to us saying like, oh, this has done this for me and like this song helps me out. And yeah, it just sure. talks about the way we deal with it. And mm-hmm. I think that's just so cool about I think that's like the coolest thing. But like. Yeah. I think with us, I think we cannot have any scene beef. And there is no scene beef. No. But I just think if there's ever any scene beef. You just got to fucking squash fucking it. Be like, come on, man. Like, be like, you didn't fucking play this show or whatever. Yeah, I get like fucking, but oh, I didn't get to play this show. I'm like, no. oh, I didn't get to. I'm yeah, not you on know, this. the one thing that I dislike more than anything is like hearing like the argument of just like, how come everyone goes and sees this band, but no one's going to come see my band? It's like you're doing something wrong. Try something new. You know. Yeah, my thing don't is like, blame someone else for people liking them. When there's there's uh those days where there's three shows going on. Yeah. People are gonna go to the bigger one. It's fine, but there's always those other shows. You there's other band. Yeah. Other times you're gonna get that opportunity, yeah. and just don't put yourself down yet. Cause like Reclaim is starting to get picked up now. We've been together for a year now. Yeah, like, like it, yeah, I feel like the shows are anti-socialite when we started. We played two shows in the span of six months. Yeah, it's it just takes time, and all you got to do is have the strength to persevere it. Yeah, but um, wrap that up. Scene beef is fucking dumb. But yeah. get over it. Uh, but I wanted to say, um, yeah, you can't start a band and expect to be liked. That's just fucking dumb. Yeah, you know? no, no, you don't, fucking... you don't, you don't start a band because you want 
attention or to be famous. You started because you love the art, you know? Um, and, then, and like, and I, I absolutely refuse to let like a bad show kind of like bring me down, you know? Cause like, regardless, you know, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to fucking give off energy and I'm going to do what I do, you know? And if people want to fucking pick up on that and be cool, you know, cool. You know, but I just, I hate being in like a shitty mood. Like no one's here to see my fucking band. No, it's, that's it's, a- it's counterproductive. And, um, I would like to say, can we cut the bullshit about playing two shows and deserving the headlining spot? Yeah, yeah. That shit's corny. That's, yeah. Don't be a um, fucking corn. Well, I, I, I feel like it's, okay, ball. so back in the day, I like I'm saying back in the day, like I'm old, like five years ago, like when like Daylight was around in like Good June, um, dudes would fucking like really want to fucking headline local shows. Be like, we're playing last. No, we want to fucking play last. And like. We never gave a shit. We just wanted to no. play. But nowadays, it's like the fucking opposite. No yeah. one wants to fucking play last. Because, like, everyone wants to play in the beginning or preferably the middle because there's always, like, that idea of, like, everyone's going to fucking leave towards the end. Yeah, no. And, and like, the way things, like, run, like, if you are put head, if you are made headlining. Well, okay. Let's, let's not use the word headlining because okay. if you're on a local scale, you're not a headliner. You're just playing last. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you are last, yeah, chances are you either are, like, you got put there because of just bands not being able to and play. Say time this availability. Time. Yeah, time, yeah. Or like at C forty seven, there's a reason why they put you there is because um either they're confident in the draw yeah. or they they have a policy where they don't make touring bands last or yeah. last because. The it, touring band's got to yeah. get back on the road and they need to pack their gear up and get to get going to the next town. Yeah. And plus, local support always opens and closes. Yeah. And that's how and that's how it is. Like in like legit mm-hmm. uh, for other uh, other shows like other hardcore like usually like the hardcore bands down in uh, o- the OC in LA always have the local act for the touring. Yeah. Touring it's because show. I mean, like imagine like being in a band, driving out to like a city you've never played. And being expect like expecting people to like come out and be like yeah like I fucking love you like like it, that that it, that's a fucking risk dude yeah no that's why they get the the middle yeah, slot. yeah they get the middle slot yeah so it's like the people who do come out to the show it's just like oh I get to see this local opener I like there's a new band in the middle like I'm not gonna dip I'm gonna stay because there's also another local band that I like that's gonna be closing well like the things too about that like you're gonna have the bad shows or you're gonna get put last it's yeah. fine. There's other shows that are going to happen. Yeah, like, that's what I, that's I tell what that I, to people constantly. Um, like, people are just like, oh, like, I can't make it to this show. It's just like, there's always going to be shows. Yeah, that's like, like don't uh, worry. And, like, anytime it's, like, a bad show, it's just like, there's going to be another one. Like, Reclaim got put last for the Leisha show, and it ended up being cool. Yeah, that shit fucking and stressed was, me out. And, you know, it just, it just, it's some days people are feeling it. Some people are, yeah. are exhausted. And, like, I just think... um yeah, no, that that yeah, I'm, that's that's probably one of the reasons why the Alicia show is my favorite show, is because we got put as the closing band, and um, I was like, fuck, dude, like, cause like at that time I was like, I don't know if people are really into Reclaim, cause you know we're like the only, we're one of the only hardcore bands in the high desert, mm-hmm. you know, and like I'm just like I don't know if people are turned off by hardcore, I don't know if people actually like the music or if people just like it cause it's us in the band, you know, it was it was a lot of self-doubt i guess i was like swimming in my head that day and i was like fuck dude because like leashes was fucking sick yeah and yeah and limerence is fucking super dope and it was like the whole time i was just like how the fuck are we gonna like be able to follow these bands yeah and then like poor me like they were dope it's just like yeah it was just like how the fuck are we gonna follow this like we're just like we're like we're just a fucking local hardcore man you know yeah and then and, like, like we went on and people were singing our shit. Yeah, and people were, were singing moving. along. They were like fucking moshing. Like it was, it was jam packed. And then in even there. the dudes from like leashes were just going hard. And yeah. they, like I remember Max running into Alex. Max kicking Little Ray. Yeah, yeah. Max uh, kicked my little brother in the face. And uh, but all you know, on. Max, if you're listening, thank you. Please come back. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, leashes. But, you guys need to come back to see. Back to the point I was making. Don't expect that shit. Don't expect to play your third show and be like, oh, I want to play last. That's yeah, some cornball yeah, shit fucking, and get over it. Yeah, just fucking cut the rock star ass fucking bullshit, you know? Yeah. Like, you're a, you're a local band, you know? Just, if you come to, like, a show, like, if you play, like, a local show with that kind of attitude, 
no one's gonna fucking like you. Like I'm sorry, that's just that's just facts, B. Yeah, no, there we don't have time for that pretentious bullshit. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Essentially, yeah. Now going, still talking on the HT. Um, back in the day late era, early okay. day late. We weren't very heavily involved in the scene. Well, there no. wasn't very much. Uh, oh, well, like there was. Well, a there scene. was a scene. It we was just a we just scene. didn't we know. We just didn't have. We we had our scene, which was the day late raining in July and good June scene. Yeah, and then like whatever, fucking, Atalanta Hesperia like punk band that was going off at the time, like the yeah. Nartard scene over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, we weren't very aware to like the whole like safe space and like respecting. Like yeah, the predatorial we, behavior and all that, and um, do do you uh with with HD getting bigger, do you think it's becoming uh, unsafe? Um, well, I mean, you can say that about anything that grows larger, because I mean, like when Daylight first started playing shows, it was so small scale to where like anyone who came into the shows we knew. That's that's the thing. That's what I wanted. To, I was gonna say too, because I was gonna. I'll bring up is we played that Ryan R- Ryan Rinker show yeah. and that shit was a fucking like there was shit going on. Yeah. Now there could be sure. shit that was happening that we didn't know of because yeah. we weren't very. Yeah, open. we didn't we didn't know anyone didn't, there. You, well, like we didn't know anybody and we weren't heavy on the idea uh, the idea of like protecting everyone's rights and safe space and oh, all yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, like we were like fifteen, sixteen. Like that yeah. wasn't in that wasn't sitting in the back of my mind, you know. Yeah, but like, now, just, like as it get, as it's like. The scene is getting bigger and it's getting more defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's it's, already been situations where like, so and so did this, so and so did that, you know. And I feel like we've been very efficient, you know, and like responsible with, you know, you know, like obviously we're not like large scale like calling people out, you know, and like no. ruining people's lives. But you know, it's just sort of just like a. Like, I'm talking specifically about C-47, just like, hey, so-so did this, you know, if they show up at the show, just kind of, like, tell them, like, hey, like, you can't be here, you know? Yeah. And it's not just about, like, like oh, like, so-and-so is a fucking scumbag. It's more of just, like, you know, people here feel unsafe around you, so you know? respecting the uh, the affected and unaffected yeah. wishes. And it's it really sucks to say, but, you know, stuff like that is, I don't want to say unavoidable, but it, it happens. You know, because you the can't whole, the, you can't turn away like anyone who like comes through like the door like C forty seven. Yes. You know, if like if a rando shows up, you know, you're gonna be like, Okay, I've never seen this person before, cool. You know. It it's just it's just a risk you kinda take, I guess, you know. Yes, that's what that's it. Like it kinda like as as more shows happen, the the behavior comes out. Yeah. And so I think with um uh, all that I think um, it's we can't put an end to it because it's yeah, like, but it's I like mean saying with with end. safe spaces as like C forty seven you know it's yes you know no it, drinking that is achievable no drugs all ages because like you know if, okay, because we'll like a talk. lot like at house show scenes like a lot of you know like under there's like a lot, a lot of under, you under, know under a lot of underage drinking. kids come out because you know it's like music you know kids love music. Yep, no, but well, okay, no. still, but like it's a house show. It's not regulated. No one's there. There's no rules, so like, you know, okay, this, kids this, are gonna drink. Kids I, are gonna smoke. You know, dudes are gonna drink. Dudes yeah, are but, gonna smoke. But I shit think, happens. But it's avoidable. You but know? I think now here's here's my hot take on this. I think the house show is not even a fucking a a performance anymore. It's just let's get fucked up. Yeah, it's a party. Yeah, it's, that's what they are. House shows are just fucking parties. It's no fun. No. And it's it's like, it is, I'm, I don't know, I just not, yeah, not, no, not a fan no, of definitely. that. Like, but, but with C-47, you are given, uh, they, they, they make sure you are exposed to the music first, then partying. Because with the touring bands coming through, a lot of these kids get the opportunity to meet them. Every time there's a new band that comes through, everyone buys the fuck out of their merch. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah, I don't know, like house shows, like you know, I I like house shows. I think they're fun. I think I think a uh, house know. show here and there is all right. Yeah, like they're, I mean, yeah, they're risky. You know, they like anything is, but um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just kind of like turned off by the idea of just like, like, getting fucked up at a show to see a band. You know. 
Yeah, no, that's no fun. Yeah, like, I'd rather, like, watch a band. Like, I mean, like, I'm not straight edge. You know, I don't think that drinking is, like, the worst thing in the world. No, I don't think that either. But, like, yeah, like, there's a lot of dudes that just come out to house shows just to get drunk. I mean, I'm, and, like, like smoke weed. And, well, like, here's my thing. Uh, like, if you're going to see your favorite band, wouldn't you want to be coherent for it? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know, there's, there's... I mean, if it's, like, your 20th time seeing I'm be like, all right, let's try something new. Like, yeah, yeah fuck with yeah, that. But, I mean, like, you know, there's dudes that are like that, just, like, you know, like to, you know, drink to have a good time. That's fine. But, like, like that can't fucking be, I don't know, dude. No. It's, it's, it's what I'm saying. Like, you can't fucking make that call all the time. Now, going back to the, the whole rock star attitude. Sure. The thing that happens with house shows is they like to book seven to ten bands. Yeah. And... To avoid no one not getting seen, they like to take the time and they set the time at seven, mm-hmm. and then they start at nine. Yeah. So that takes, and they all get half an hour sets. Yeah. Or it's not even like regulated time. It's just like yeah, fuck it. Whatever. Yeah, you, you just, just fucking play. play. You. So that means everyone's gonna show out, and so by the time the first band's going on, then the crowd starts picking up. Yeah. And it's already eight forty-five. Yeah. And you oh, still like, got nine more bands to go through. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, that's the fu- that's my fucking least it's, favorite thing about fucking like, house shows. And, on like, the, and then like it's I uh with house shows that stay true, this the band that's going on first is is not gonna have the greatest scene. Yeah, no, because everyone's coming out of work or school or mm-hmm. whatnot. Okay. But here is my proposal to anyone out there who is trying to throw a local show just at you know your house. Here's like my cool proposal to you. Um, keep it to four or five bands. Um, set your time early on purpose. Like, say the show is going to start at six. So that gives you like some time for people to show up. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, if you want to book, you know, like, like, let's say there's eight bands that you really like and you want to put them all on a bill. Think about it like this. Uh, do it fucking the next week too. Yeah, do it next week. Like weekend. I would love that. Like four bands one week, and next week I get to see four different bands. Yeah, do it next week. It's like if if the like show that's goes something I would fucking the show love goes to. really well at your house. Do it next week yeah. or do it in the next couple of weeks. Like let me think. Um, let's say it's a show that's like, I'm just gonna start throwing out names. Like, like I'm gonna just name off like eight bands. Like the Licks, County Fair, Reclaim. Uh, Schmoog, Spinach Dip, Snare, uh, noise. Snare Noise, Juniper Park, Juniper Park, Limerence. Yeah, you can literally just cut that in half, and do four bands on one day, and like four bands the week after. Mix bills and kill it too. Yeah, mix bills are fucking dope. Um, Reclaim, I want to do a show with Juniper Park. <laughs> let's do it. Let's get it. Yeah. Juniper Park boys, if you listen, you know what. Let, you know, I'm, let's just start the culture of like indie hardcore. <laughs> Dude, fuck it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. because no, I play- mean, like all the you know, like the dudes in Juniper Park, I think they're cool dudes. I like them. You know. Yeah. I like Juniper Park. Like, I, why wouldn't I want to like play a show with them and just hang out with them? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like same with like Snare Noise. I haven't actually met them, but I've I've heard a little bit of their music, and uh, I was like, yeah, I like to play with them too. Dude, the singer's name's Geo. Oh, I think he plays drums too. I think they're the band that likes to swap around instruments. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I've never caught. Well, a hey, set. Snare Noise, if you're listening, and you want to play a show with a hardcore band, hit me up. Yeah, Snare Noise. Like we can Snare we'll Noise make it claim. So, back to the topic: Is the HC scene unsafe or not? Um, I don't know. That's kind of like a tough call, man. Um. There anything not, can happen at any time, but yes. I feel like the situations that have happened have been handled very well. Yes, I think so. The, I feel like you know you can't really say that we're safe. You can't like I wouldn't no. say we're unsafe, but I do say we're handling things well, and I, I feel like we are as prepared as can be. I think whatever you throw at us, we'll be fine. Yeah. So um, not I don't know if I should talk about this. Um, yeah, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, but, I'll talk about it. But out of the respect of C47. Um, 
Well, I mean, it's kind of like something that just like happened, you know, and shit like that happens. Um, and like, yeah, it just kind of ties into the whole idea of like whatever, you know, what has happened has been handled well. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, go yeah, on. you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk about it. Right. Uh, what was it? Um, it was uh, was it June? June sixteenth, June sixteenth, twenty seven, twenty eighteen. Um, Belladonna played a show with uh, Zeta and uh, the Lakes, the Lakes. With Angel Castaneda. Yeah, uh, great show, fun time. Um, a little bit of a fight broke out. Uh, you know, uh, homie got upset. You know, no, actually, there was there was like a fight in the pit, and you know we were just like, hey, you know, you guys got to go. That shit's not cool here, and like, you know, the dude just like freaked out and was like, oh, I want a refund through a fit over like five bucks and you know like there was essentially a fight i mean it wasn't really a fight like i got punched in the face you got punched in the head um <laughs> it was and wild. then we eventually got the dude to leave and you know never came back i haven't seen him since i don't think anyone has but yeah you know like you know shit like that happens yeah you know? and like you said handled very well yeah hasn't like as anything, as well as it could be hasn't had any haven't, haven't had, had a problem anything. since but um yeah you know like you know, it just ties into the whole, like, you know, are we safe? You know, if you were to ask me if we were safe at that time, I probably would have been like, yeah. But, you know, like, you're not really prepared for that shit, you know? But like, That's why it's like, we're not safe, but we're not unsafe. Because shit like that can strike at, like, any moment. And going back onto the topic, it is growing because more shit is happening in it, the scene now. Yeah, sure. Like, this shit was never happening at daylight shows. Yeah, because everyone who came to the shows, we knew. And like since we're on like a larger scale now, you know, it's it, you gotta expect new people, and you don't know these people, so yeah, it's just shit like that happens, you know. Now um, getting off of uh, the heavy topics, sure. We've been uh, veterans of the Tinder game. Yeah, yeah, sure. What is the Tinder strat? Like my Tinder strat? Yes, dude. It's it's kind of whack. Like I don't know. Like I've never had like a really successful like Tinder date. I guess because like. Yeah, I don't know, like, I feel like Tinder is, like, super whack, but I still use it, so, like... Oh, I still look at it. I just download it. I just, I still look at it. Yeah, like, I mean, now that I live in Barstow, I don't use it, because, like, there's, like, there's no women in Barstow. <laughs> there's nothing in Barstow. It's a sausage uh, fest out there. Huh? It's a sausage fest out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just me and my bros. <laughs> um, Amen. But, yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah, the, like, anytime I match with a girl, I'm, like, hey, with, like, a smiley emoticon. You know, I'm just, like, really casual. She's like, hey. And I'm just like, how you doing? She's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, that's cool. And, like, I'll, like, try to be, like, just got done doing this. Like, sometimes I'll just make shit up. Like, if I did nothing all day. Like, oh, like, just got done, yeah, you know. Yeah, just save some puppies. Uh, reading a book, you know. <laughs> I'll just, like, do something like that. It's like, oh, like, or, like, I just got done, like, listening to this new album. What are you listening to? Oh, I'm listening to this. Um, But, yeah, dude, I'm so fucking boring. Like, I'm so fucking bad at flirting. Um, like I just I can't. Just I know. I know. When we first started with Tinder, we all made each other's accounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a it was a joke in the beginning. Um, where um, like if Brad would get a match, I would take his phone and like message whatever girl. Some some fucking really. Yeah, yeah. Just like just to, like shit. fuck with each other, you know, and like vice versa. But now we've matured. Yeah, and we take it serious. <laughs> Except for me, I I. Well, um, I mean, I kind of take it seriously. Like I kind of just like talk to people on it now. I um, like I'm never like let's go on a date because I don't know, dude. I swipe on everyone. Yeah, I do the same thing. So I like, s- okay, if you're, if you know me, Mr. Truck Man starting his fucking truck. Yeah. If you like know me, and like we've like matched on Tinder. If you know me. <laughs> you fucking, fucking don't. <laughs> I miss that. I don't. Um, but yeah. Uh, like if you know me in person and we've matched on Tinder, um, it's partly because like, if I see anyone I know on Tinder, I'm going to swipe right. Cause I'm like really hoping we match. So I'll I can be like, like the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll do that too. So I'll be like you too. Yeah, but like, I literally swipe right on everyone just cause like, I don't have the fucking time to like read profiles. And like, if I do get a match, which is like rare, you know, I'll like look at their profile and be like, wow, this person, you know, looks okay. Like I'll talk to him. Or it's like, I feel like I'll have nothing in common with this girl, and I'll just, like, unmatch. I don't care. Like, yeah, I've matched with, like, a few girls I know. Yeah. And, like, like they'll be like, so what are you doing on here? And I'm just, like, chilling. Yeah, <laughs> What's like, up with I you? remember, like, seeing my cousin on there. 
And I'm like, damn, you too? And she's like, hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, good luck. <laughs> hey, Godspeed, chief. Um, yeah, no, I swipe around anybody. And it's not, I, I kind of like yeah. get the match and I'll be like, <gasps> well, I mean, unless I it's like, I'm like afraid certain of women. girls, you know. And like, I'll be like, like, if it's like, if it's like a certain girl that's like, maybe like I went to high school with and was like kind of a bitch, I'll be like, nope. <laughs> and like, just like, big yeah, ass swipe, right? Yeah. Like, I'm kind of like, also like, I wonder about that too. Like, like I, girls I, remember, I went to high school with, like, see me on Tinder. It's like, Hey, that's that dude I went to high school with. What a fucking loser. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like lame for having a yeah. Tinder. Like, cause I don't, like, I, don't I, I, I know like, we'll see like people we know. We're like, Oh, <laughs> like, we're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I had this thought recently. Like I saw like. It's like, oh, so and so is on Tinder, and I'm like, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Then I like, I was like, I'm on Tinder. Like, I wonder if like anyone's like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, that dude sucks. Oh uh, damn. I don't know. I think I think it's funny because like when we first started, I was a uh, single dad with no kids. Yeah. And people were just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, I remember getting tagged yeah. in like photos. But um, yeah, no Tinder. If you uh, if you're on Tinder, if you see us, please match with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Match with me, and uh, I'll talk to you. I won't flirt with you though, even though that's what Tinder's for. Shout out to uh shout out to the Tinder girls. Yeah. All the Tinder the, the real the real M V P. I'm not gonna say your name, but we love you. <laughs> um All right, what's next? <laughs> uh getting back to music. God, this uh, chair's uncomfortable, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. My ass hurts. Um Trapped Under Ice, Heat Wave. Is it underrated? Uh yeah, definitely. I love that album. I think See, it's like I really really like it cuz like I feel like it like it reminds me of like an old school like 80s like punk record. It's just blat- it just like cruises straight through. It's like 15 minutes long. No, I think um why people are upset with it is because there's gotta, a lot of angel dust well, sprinkled no, no, along well, okay, the top. Yeah, well that too, but like you have 2007 demo. Yeah. Stay cold. Oh yeah. Um, Secrets of the World. Yeah. Big Kiss Goodnight. Oh, yeah. Gone. Then now they're disappeared for like five years. Yeah. They come back with Heat Wave. Mm. People are like, what the fuck is well, this? Well, what is, is the, di- like, what's the year difference in that? 2013 to 2017. Oh, okay. So it's not that much. Um. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like. They fucking hated it because it was, it was a little bit more popular and Justice Strip has been. More on the Angel Dust and yeah, style grind. Yeah, 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 of course. But I mean, like, you know, progression is normal. Like, it's still a fucking hard-hitting record. Yeah, like, well, like... like it, no like, one's gonna listen to that and be like, this isn't hardcore, because you know, it fucking is, you know? Yeah, like, well, like, it's very pop... It's, like, a lot... It's a lot more poppy, but well, it's, I, it's well, okay. still fucking, like, thick and just yeah, fucking fat. I would say, like, Trapped Under Ice's older stuff is, like, hardcore, but, like so slightly close to like metalcore like in the sense of like the music you know it's a yeah. lot of like technical stuff like they're fucking they got fucking great fucking grooves and riffs yeah and but then, yeah like it's it's very very close to metalcore you know and I, and I feel like with heat wave it's just hardcore i think i think they and just it's not like to, a signature trapped under ice sound i guess i think they just wanted to get shit out and just be like here's a fucking fun record i think they just wanted to make music and they did it yeah, and I think I think they wanted to do what like, they do. Like I don't do. think and they I, sat down and were just like, "We need to make a Trapped Under Ice record," because like all the dudes in that band have different bands. Yeah, like, like okay, I don't so think like, they were like, "We need a Trapped Under Ice record." Like we gotta fucking put it out. Well, like, like the fans the thing need is, it. Uh, Justice s- said in an interview, he was uh-huh. like, "It's like yeah, I'm not so hateful and spiteful anymore. Yeah. Like I'm so like, I'm just chilling now. That's yeah, I mean, like, like the like, vibe you give." But underrated, I think yes. I think there's like four or five songs that are just mean. Like oh, yeah. like. Well, extra uh, large is fucking amazing. Uh, uh, boop, boop, boop. What is uh, it? fucking, uh, oblivion. Oblivion's fucking good. Uh, what's uh, do it's oh, good. It's My head. Yeah, uh, do it's yeah fucking do it's fucking like, God that song's fucking good. It's uh, like it's see. still like hard as shit, but like it fucking grooves uh, hard as shit. Self titled fucking uh, heat wave. Okay, heat wave. I really like that song, but like that intro riff, it just sounds like a fucking like, I don't want to say a pop punk song, but it just sounds like a punk song. I'm like, no, dee, 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 dee. uh, no relief. Oh, yeah. No relief. yeah, that's a fucking great song. Uh, pressure is on, whatever. 
pressure is on. Yeah. Uh, move. Hit him with the heat. Yeah. Show me if you feel this way now. Move. I think I think it was a good record. Yeah, that riff is fucking cool. On that I song. was so stoked. I remember. Damn, I hit the mic. Yeah, Whatever. Cool. I remember one of our friends who was like, "Yeah, big kiss, good night, secrets of the world." Fucking believe all the way. He was like, "This shit is garbage." I was like, "Fuck you." Yeah, fuck off. Yeah. Um, like I don't know. It's like the dudes that hate fucking heat wave are like the fucking toxic macho hardcore dude, so they could fuck off anyways. I stay cold. I stay cold, motherfucker. Um. Okay. So staying in the public family tree. Okay. Angel dust or turnstile? Turnstile. You know this. I have a turnstile tattoo. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. No. Turnstile is fucking great because like they're like, like I I have I've explained this to multiple people. Like they're they're what I like in hardcore. Like I feel like hardcore is like it's about the energy, you know. And I feel like it's more about like like when emotion. I feel your energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like it's more about the energy and like. You know, like like that, like raw fucking emotion, you know, versus like people who look at hardcore just like, oh, it's all about being fucking angry and being like a tough guy. Like, I don't I don't like that, you know, like, what you know, that fuck? exists like that. Emo core doesn't fine. exist. When was hardcore not emotional? Yeah. Emo core the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Emo fuck you. <laughs> nah, dude, I love you, Emo um, um, But yeah, no, like, you know, macho, tough guy, hardcore, it exists. You know, it makes sense. You know, respect it. I love it. Because, like, that's what, you know, hardcore is. Like, that's, like, the base of hardcore. But, like, me as, like, an individual, I feel like hardcore is about, you know, energy and, like, having, like, an outlet for that release. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I'm not going on stage, like, playing, like, a Reclaim set, like, fucking pissed. You know, I'm not out for blood. You know, I'm there to fucking, like, get rid of, like, some pent-up energy, you know, and fucking play some music. You know? That's yeah. what That's what it is. And I feel like Turnstile portrays that absolutely perfect you know through like yeah they're just they're just probably one of my favorite hardcore bands ever all right and time and space is a great record fuck anyone <sighs> besides whack i'm with you on that but it's moon's still the it's, only good thing the, the moon's yeah, good. moon is fucking good besides but, like, whack. but i mean it a great fucking record slaps but it like, fucking okay. slaps a great record is four or five songs mm -hmm. like it'd be 12 songs as the four or five I good know. songs that's a great record yeah you know, that's, yeah. That's all I want. Now, nonstop feeling. Is it the best? The best uh, tennis album release? Uh, no. Um, for me, I'd say Step Two of Them. What's your favorite song? I think Step Two Rhythm's a fucking sick ass like guitar part. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I f I'm going to say seven. Just because, like, that is turnstile to me. That's that sound. You know, like, Very, that. It sounds like Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's a turnstile sound. But, yeah. Uh, I know Generator. Uh, I want to say Pressure second. Like, Pressure's fucking good. Like, But, like, I feel like Pressure and Step 2 Rhythm are, like, very different. Like, I feel like uh, pressure to succeed is like more just like straight up like hardcore, like you can just throw that like back to back with like any like hardcore album. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Step to Rhythm kind of sticks out a little bit more as like this like distinguishes the band. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then like nonstop feeling like they just really fucking hammered their sound in. Like that's when they were just like, "This is Turnstile. This is what fucking Turnstile sounds like." Move through me is kind of like whatever, you know, and then like time and space is cool. It was so bad they had to re-record. <laughs> but nah. no, I think it's cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, Turnstile, if you're listening, love you. Yeah, shout you out. Shout out to Turnstile. They need it. They need the plug. <laughs> they need. They need the plug. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think my final question for you is or one of the final questions is okay. Plans for the plan or future of Caesar Marquez. And um, any other projects you're involved in? Well, uh, yeah, that's kind of tough. Like, I my, I know my future holds a lot of music, you know, whether it be making music, listening to music, you know, collecting records, CDs, tapes, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm going to be doing it. Just like whatever music I can be around, you know, I'm going to be around it. As long as music exists, it's going to be in my life. Future of Reclaim. 
What's coming um, up for Reclaim? My current goal for Reclaim is to have uh, something out in the winter time and to play Sound and Fury. That's like my current goal right now. Like, I feel like that's a goal. Like, it's not like a huge goal. Like, I mean, like, I could easily be like, biggest goal for Reclaim is to fucking get signed, you know? But like, I feel like our obtainable goal right now is like, we could, like, fuck it. Like, it sounds kind of crazy, but I feel like Sound and Fury, like, is, like, my big goal right now that I want for Reclaim. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Um, Like, I feel like if we just play our cards right and just keep doing shows and kind of, like, break out of the desert, we can do Sound and Fury. Yeah. We're playing some shows out of the desert soon. <coughs> I think October 20th and November 3rd. Yeah. There will be more details on that on the Insta. Yeah, we we're always posting. Yes, we're very active. Yeah. Um. And the, we don't really know about Belladonna. Yeah, it's Belladonna. Like day by day thing. Yeah, like Bella. Like I said, like I don't hate Belladonna. It's just like Belladonna is like an Alex thing, you know. And I'm just along for the ride, you know. He's the fucking train. I'm the caboose. I'm the coal. <laughs> I'm the thing that powers it. Okay. <laughs> Is is that what they put in trains? Or what are they put in trains? People. Gas. <laughs> they put yeah. gas in trains? Yeah. Oh. What if it's a bullet train? Is it like electric? It runs on bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it runs on freedom. <laughs> That's where all the damn ammunition's coming from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um uh I like to ask this question. Um, what has been your recent listens? What have you uh, been listening to recently? Your local uh, local listens and kind of bigger listens. Okay, um, listening to the Noble Bones EP, you know, really yep. like it. You know, uh, love the sound of that band. Um, you know, they're just probably like my favorite punk band in the desert. What was it High Desert Response to Gainesville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just a great band because I love the Gainesville sound. Um, listened to a lot of Ceremony recently. Um, the Fuck new one liners fucking just to impress the new um distort. I love it. Um, I know you don't like it, so distort if no, you're I love if, it. Distort if you're hearing this, no, I love it. Brad Racing hates your band. I love it. I yeah. love everything they put out. Yeah, I love distort. Yeah, their new release I really like. Um, Survival. on the way up here, I was listening to Fury. Um, I would say Fury is one of my favorite hardcore bands. Yeah, dude, like, Fury and Distard's pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me Yeet. think. Let me think. Because there's, there's one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Results of Choice. That's a band I've been listening to a lot. Not crazy about it. Well, I fucking love Results of Choice. Like, I love, I love the way that they structure songs. Like, I love, like, their riffs. I love their transitions. You know, they're just a fucking dope band. They're super fucking tight. Um, so, yeah, results of choice, if you're listening, I love you. Um, let's see, what else? What else came out? A new Gougeway's cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what, yeah, what crawled what? out of the grave. I crawled out of the grave. <laughs> and patched it up. Yeah, I love them. Uh, how do you feel about Vortex? Yeah, I like Vortex. One band I've been fucking with from AP, motherfucking Overload and Natural Energy. Oh yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 Overload dun, Natural Energy is cool. Dun, dun, I need dun, to I need to listen to them again. Like I need to dun, dun, give them another dun, dun, listen because uh, I listened to their release about three times when I was out in Arizona, but it was like one of those things where like I was doing other things, so I wasn't totally like tuned in with it. So I got to give that another listen. Um... Vortex is dope. Um, yeah, you know, anything Advanced Perspective puts out has just been fucking sick. Like, whoever is in charge of, like, finding those bands and fucking recording it's them. Marco, dude. It's all Marco. Yeah, yeah like, it's him. It's all him. It's all him. Well, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, maybe someone was just like, check out this band Vortex. I don't know, dude. Anyways. Um, dude, that's Augie. That's his homie. All right, what's up? Um, yeah, like, dude's got fucking great yeah, taste. Yeah, that one band fucking my own, dude. They just kill it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, like, never I heard of those dudes. I wish I got dudes. to talk to him. Never really, like, I don't know who's in that band, but, like, Maron, man, like, 
lay lay it down, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> hope to hope to hear more from them. <laughs> It, yeah, honestly, yeah. On, yeah. Not being sarcastic. Yes, I want more. Yeah, we uh, want more, Maron. Yeah, Julio, if you're listening, Maron, <laughs> get on it, it. Fool. <laughs> <All right. laughs> get on it, fool. Um, yeah, with that, uh, I think we're good. Well, like I'm gonna new reclaim in December. New rec- December? You going to December? Or should we just say winter? <laughs> Let's do winter. Okay, I, that's <laughs> that's say, a better. Say, is that a lot of pressure on you? <laughs> Well, what for you? What's winter? Is January winter? Dude, winter's still fucking. Is February winter? Hell yeah. March. No, it's, I yeah. consider that like that's spring. I'm like, uh, it's like all right, motherfucker. Like, yeah. let's get hot again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to winter, dude. I'm fucking sick. Of oh yeah. So, um, to wrap this up, my name is Caesar. You can find me on the internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll plug the goddamn ads. Okay, yeah. Well, I wasn't going to have myself. I'll just say I'm on the internet. Reclaim's on the internet. Belladonna's on the internet. E-boy. Yeah, I'm, an, I'm apparently an E-boy. Do you want me to plug any of your music? You know what I mean? If you want to fucking throw Reclaim on the fucking podcast, sure. I don't mind it. Everyone's heard Reclaim, okay? I, I won't do it. No. You know what I want you to put? I want you to put that uh, acoustic improv that Garrett sent to the group chat. The one mm. where it's like, black metal. <laughs> You don't want me to put the second car bomb song on here? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, put the new car bomb. All right, all right. I'll put the new car yeah, bomb. Yeah, put the new car bomb. Um, but yeah, that being said, newer claim in the wintertime. And uh, yeah, thank car you guys. Car bomb EP. Car bomb EP. Yeah, let's do it. That sounds ambitious. Fuck it. I mean, why not? The fans have been dying for it. <laughs> all right, yeah. Yeah, we'll you do new we'll Miami. Do, yeah. yeah, fuck it. We'll do, Miami. we'll do new car bomb. All right, well, good? this has been an episode of the local man's awful podcast with like thanks Caesar for coming in. Thank you for having me. Um and yeah. Yeah, you know, I just you know, matter you know, like we don't fucking do this often. I'm just gonna sit down and talk for hours with my best friend. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Like this one like is probably one of the easiest flowing ones. Yeah. I was gonna say, I, well, it's I mean, kind of like, weird like thinking like it's like like 'cause you and I fucking we, we fucking talk. But like now it's like we're talking for people. Well like this well like um with Gary, it was like kind of stiff because it's like, oh, this is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like of course. County Fair, it was just like, I don't know, it was cool. I mean, like, we haven't been that long of friends, but oh. And then with like Mark and then the other people, it's starting to become more comfortable and relaxed. And yeah. The people, and like, you can hear it in their voices, they get more calmer. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not so uptight. But, um, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to plug? No. All right. That's a wrap. Yeah, fuck Morrissey.